Okay, so I'm going to give you some practical tips now. Um, and uh, some of these have come out of research. Some of it's come out of um, parents telling me what's worked for their families. Um, so obviously some will work for um, some families and some things will resonate with some kids or whatever, but just maybe adapt things or maybe it make you think of different things that you hadn't thought of before. So for little babies, you know, up to three year olds, um, it's quite good to have a separation if you are separated. So if you're into going into hospital or um, you have to be isolated for some reason, um, using blankets or something that smells of you, like your T-shirts or whatever, um, can really help them. Also, you can tie a photo of yourself um, onto a teddy or something like that. And so when they go to sleep or when they go to school or, or, or nursery, um, they can have that. So it feels like it's a sense of you, you going with them. Um, taking photos and video recordings and voice uh, recordings can also keep them feel connected with you. Um, and if you have, um, you know, if you just come out of surgery, for example, uh, trying out different hugs can be quite a good thing. So, um, you know, kind of finger hugs or eyelashes or arm hugs or leg hugs or something like that. And they can get quite creative out of that. Um, so for older kids from three to sort of five year olds, um, they really need to uh, have an, know their routine and how this is going to change um, because it manages their expectations of what's going on and it will help you because they won't be asking the same question all the time. So tell them of any change of their routine and um, you can do this by getting just a piece of paper and dividing it up into say morning, lunchtime, afternoon, dinner, evening and putting on where they're going to be, an activity they're going to be doing or whatever. So, and stick it up in the fridge or something. So they will have a real clear understanding of a day or even just a morning. And this works really well if the childcare is quite um, chaotic. You know, grandma's coming around here for a bit and then a friend's coming over there. So they have a sense of control. So for that day, they know what's going on in their lives. Um, it can be good for them to identify their feelings. Sometimes they, because they're quite young, it's quite um, difficult for them to find which feelings that they are feeling. So sometimes it's good to, I'll get this, to get a teddy, one of eight, and um, talk to the teddy uh, about teddy's feelings. And this can be easy for children because they're not just talking about themselves, they're talking about their teddy, but often we can see that actually what their teddy's feeling is what they are feeling. So you can say, you know, how's teddy feel? You know, are they feeling sad? Or are you angry about um, missing so-and-so's play date, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that can be a really good way of trying to draw out what uh, the children are feeling. Uh, listen to their play. Um, because that can sometimes you can listen and hear what they're worried about um, through them you know playing with their little uh, whatever they play with um, reading different stories um, is always good because you never know when they might suddenly ask a question about something or you might suddenly there might be a character within a book that has a particular difficult feeling like um, anger or guilt or something like that and you can start a conversation um, using that character um, also, a lot of kids, um, they really want to be, feel useful, even at this young age. So you can um, include them in family tasks or include them in um, doing things like, so we've got um, a big how to help around the house um, and it's from changing toilet rolls. Um, might be a bit apt at the moment um and um you know putting away matching up socks and things like that very sort of age appropriate but they feel like they are being useful and um can uh, and a part of the family really um so for older kids so for six to it's kind of ten um similar to what i've just spoken about telling them about any change of their routine um, and so for some kids they still like the morning um, you know kind of 
afternoon dinner time whole thing sp like um spelled out on a day shoot for some older kids they prefer it in a monthly thing and now that can be really really important so it, for example if you're getting if someone's uh, if a parent's having chemotherapy they might find that actually they know their cycle so by day three post chemotherapy they might be really really tired and will not be able to do anything other than sleep so if they put that onto the calendar the child will know actually that's the same day as I have football practice so I know mum can't take me and so they have that they they can manage again they can manage their own expectations um so again let's talk about worries about um keep communication open about what's worrying them um and that can be done again through different stories um about different emotions and uh there are some really brilliant um there's a couple of apps and some great animations which i will show you i'll put in the link underneath these bits of videos uh, that are really really good and can help you and your child talk through um what the impact of parental cancer can have on them um you can uh, create a worry box which is a really good tried and tested um, technique so you can get any old box or make one up um, and the idea is that children put uh, write down or draw their worries and put it in it's really important to say that they are parking their worries they're not getting rid of them but they're parking their worries and sometimes this can be good just before bedtime so they offload their uh, worries into the worry box Good to have the worry box out of the bedroom because it feels like there's some distance there uh, for some children it's before school they can place all their worries in there and go into school with a clearer head um, and some kids will allow you to have a look through the worry box um, and if that's consented then that's quite a nice idea to see because uh, then you have a, a better understanding of, of what their worries are because some worries you may never even thought of for example, um, this one social worker told me that this, I think it was about 11 year old boy, his mum was very sick over some holidays um, and in his own head he had worried about his school uniform and he had come up with three strategies. Strategy number one was that he was going to wear his old uh, school uniform that was too small for him and he'll just be ridiculed. Um, his second strategy was the fact that he just wouldn't wear um, a school uniform and get told off by teachers and his third strategy was that he just wouldn't go to school and when he disclosed this to the social worker the social worker was like well why can't your dad go and get your school uniform and he just hadn't thought of it because in his head his mum had always gone and got his school uniform and he couldn't understand he couldn't sort of get his head around the fact that oh his dad could have done it so had he not disclosed that he would have been worrying all summer holidays about what he was going to do so the upshot is that sometimes you have no understanding no idea what's going on in children's heads um, again include them around the house giving them age appropriate tasks with this age group you can be a bit more like you know dishwasher load uh, washing machine and those kind of things um, and um, try and give them a, a good sort of cancer education that is age appropriate again there's some really good apps and animations that i will tell you about later um and also it's really important to encourage them to have fun uh, many kids will feel really guilty the fact that if they do have fun then they're like oh they have suddenly uh, a memory that they've left the mum or dad at home unwell but if you give them permission to have fun then um, they would find that a lot easier so for um oh another thing is that's a quite a good tool is to create a kind of future fun list um and this helps uh them understand that potentially it's not always going to be like this it might be really challenging at the moment but there is a future um and it can be quite a near future or it can be you know and it's up to you and it's up to you know the current circumstances but it's quite nice um for them to see some things that might happen um 
few weeks, a few months, a year down the line. And they can just be things like um, having a picnic in the front room. Uh, it might be designing a Lego structure. It might be even, you know, visiting the park, visiting cinema or something like that. But if they can see something, some fun things happening there, then that can be really good for their uh, sort of, um, for making them feel like uh, it's not always going to be like this. Um, and the other good thing as well, uh, some kind of um, an idea is to have like a, a family games box. So when you're feeling really knackered um, at the end of your patience and everything, but you still want to have um, communication and connection with your child to dip into a box that um, has games in there um, and has very sort of low key. So there's no kind of mental, uh, you know, very sort of um, easy games for you to be able to play and for them to be able to play. Okay, and then um, for 12 year olds and up, teenagers really, um, to support them is to really provide um, good accurate information or signposting them to good information um, so reliable websites because there's a lot of that out there which is not very good so to be able to point, um, point them to CR Cancer Research UK or Macmillan or other ones that you have feel like you know you've validated them um, again encourage them to have fun because they want to you know their friends will be a really important source for them so encourage them to be out there and also um, that support might go to you know to other adults as well that aren't within the family but that that's still okay um, and try different communications um, to continue uh, keeping everyone updated and everyone involved um, and this communication can um, occur in many different forms uh, for some and it depends on your children some people some kids just want tiny little snippet others would like long uh, complex narratives so for example we've got um, using text using a closed Facebook now every teenager I've ever known will just laugh at you if you talk about Facebook because it's an old person's app however they may be in charge say of creating the closed Facebook group so and then posting on the relevant updates how the, uh, their parent is doing something like that. so having that administration role might be really important for them um, setting up what whatsapp messaging and communicating little bits and pieces there for some families it's like having a massive chalkboard in the in the you know a sort of kind of kitchen or something like that and putting everything that's going on up there um, for others it's having weekly uh, or daily or monthly kind of uh, round table everyone sat at the kitchen table discussions uh, talking in the car is a really good thing because you're not sitting um, opposite them so it's not so confrontational so you can have open up a lot because um, yeah you're not seeing each other's emotions as, as the surface uh, for some things it's quite a good idea to say that you go for a favourite walk or favourite cafe to have a drink and that's a weekly occurrence so if you say on Thursday at five o'clock we go to this cafe um, we don't necessarily have to talk about cancer or the impact it has on our family however if it does come up it does come up and give them it's like giving them a dedicated space and time that is for them to talk about it if they want to. Um, yeah, for some people it's post-it notes around the house or having a notepad where everyone puts all their stuff in. Um, it's quite nice to have a uh, sort of non-verbal way of showing your emotions. So um, we, I developed these um, kind of leaves with uh, 90 emotions, negative and positive, and you, you put them on a tree but you can do this by just listing a loads of emotion, emotions get it for Google and printing it off and kids can just circle it and it's quite nice you don't have to really like go into a massive conversation they can just circle what they have and parents have said to me that's been really really um, positive for them because often they think that their children will be feeling all negative things but actually when they go and see all the the emotions that they've circled or stuck on the tree have been positive so for them they feel like they're parented well 
and also they feel that their child is doing okay. Um, and the thing is, is that actually, if it doesn't work the first time, just try again and keep on trying. And it may not work all the time, but actually teenagers will, deep down, will have um, know that you, you have been trying to support them and they will feel supported even if they don't want to talk to you. Um, okay.